Brad Kowarchuk, President of Brayland Technology Solutions from uh, Saskatchewan, Canada, and been an HTG member for about five years now. And probably the biggest pain that we had coming into HTG is that we had tried doing managed services. We, we, we knew this was a good way to go, but had literally fallen flat on our face, threw our hands in the air and said, you know, we just don't get this. Um, joined HTG and sat in a room with other people that only did managed services and realized that this was possible. So having that group there sharing their best practices for us gave us the confidence to go ahead and try it again. We not only tried, we succeeded and made that transition, which, which really at the time we didn't think we could do. My name is Erin Arnold. I'm from Next Step Networking in Cincinnati, Ohio. We've been in HTG for almost six years now, so a long time. And for me, I started HTG when I was an employee and have since taken over ownership and now become a business owner. So they say it takes three years to get good at your job. Well, with HTG, I've been able to shorten that time way down by getting good information from my peers to help me make the right decisions to improve the business so that it's in a far better place than it was when I took it over. Chris Bates with Computer Hut. I've uh, been a member of HTG for almost five years now. Uh, when I joined HTG, we were really struggling uh, with profitability in a second office that we have. Um, the bleeding in that office uh, almost killed us as a company. We, we took a long, hard look with our HTG peers at the cost and the revenues in that office and, and really had to make some tough decisions. Uh, we downsized that office uh, tremendously, scaled back, um, took a lot of ego hits to, to make it happen. And, and today we have, uh, we have turned that around and actually are to a point where we are making a small profit in that office, but more importantly, it hasn't killed the organization. And without having HTG peers really making us be accountable for the decisions and the cost that we had in that office, uh, we may not be here today. Good morning, everyone. That brief moment of silence was for whichever political candidate you were for that did not win. <laughs> it's a new day. It's a new day in America, new day around the world, new day for HTG, and we're glad you're here. We've got about an hour of content planned before we get you off to your meetings. We'll be hitting that timing on time. My name is Scott Scroggin, and I have the pleasure of serving as president of HTG. Today's address is the Q4 HTG All presentation, which we make twice a year. It is posted now on the HTG SharePoint site. So if uh, you or your group has interest in digging into some of the slides, they're there and available for you. In terms of today, I'm going to take you on a little bit of a, a path, a journey. And not unlike some of your QBRs, we're going to spend some of the time looking in the rearview mirror and some of the time out the windshield the majority of the time, we hope, out the windshield. And when we talk about looking backwards, we've kind of gone back to the future. And by that, I mean Arlen's going to come up and talk to you about some research that we've done into the original members of HTG. Does HTG matter? How they performed? So that you can have a comparison as to where you are on this journey. The next thing we're going to do is talk a little bit about the 2012 state of the program. What did we accomplish? in 2012? What do we need to do more of or do better? Well, then shift gears and look forward. Arlen's going to come visit with you about a new framework that we're working on, uh, about a model that we'll be talking more about throughout 2013 around organizational health. Pat Lincioni, some of you have read The Advantage, and that's going to be a focus in what we do. We're then going to take a look at some of the changes in 2013, and that's really where we hope we have some of your interest around some of our new activities, meetings, facilitation, opportunities with hands that give, and others. And then we're going to look beyond in terms of what we're asking of you. Our ask of you to execute, our ask of you to pursue opportunities that are in our mutual best interest. So before I hand things off to Arlen, I have a few thank yous that I'd like to hand out. I'd certainly like to thank, uh, I'd like to begin with thanking our advisory council members and you can visit the website, see who they are. I won't call them out individually. Uh, they've met already this week in a long uh, 
uh, good meeting. We're provided feedback on what you as members would like to have as part of HTG. Secondly, all the facilitators. The facilitators uh, met yesterday to prepare for the meeting. They had a meeting uh, two weeks ago to prepare for this as well. And we're looking forward to them being well prepared and you having some excellent meetings. We've got a number of speakers that presented as well. Uh, Dr. Little, Mike Simmel, and others. We thank their subject matter expertise participation. And I'd also tie that into the HLG group, which you'll hear a little bit more about later. We also had a group facilitate the special interest groups. Uh, those being specifically those for their facilitators, usually two per group, thank them for being organized and helping those add value to the program. We thank the team at Varvid for their effort today. This is being webcast, and we will have, uh, be able to report on the number of people that have um, participated in the webcast literally around the world. On the H and the HTG team, I have to thank Christy Sacco, who from who from literally the day we were in Dallas began working on this event, both from the standpoint of integrating with ConnectWise and the ConnectWise schedule and the overall agenda and timing. The rest of the, of the HTG team you've seen here through registration, appreciate their help. I also want to uh, give a special shout out to Ben and Rachel Scow, who have been with us literally for years as they grew up and now uh, uh, manage a good part of the event, whether it's AV or registration. And I also want to thank Nancy Sorensen, as uh, Nancy has opened her home, kitchen, and heart to HTG as we bring literally hundreds of people through Omaha and the farm for the activities that we have there. So we certainly appreciate all their help. I've got one more thank you that I need to give, and I'm already getting warm up here on stage, so the timing of this is really good. I need to thank our friends at Intel for sponsoring the new 2013 HTG shirt. So last year you were in the red, this year we want you in the black. Now, this isn't Arlen's favorite color, but when I sold him on the idea that if we haven't yet put 10 points to your bottom line, that the slimming effect can take 10 pounds off your midline, he was sold. He, he was sold, he'd be wearing them daily. But most of all, we want to thank you for being here. You vote with your feet, you vote with your time, and you vote with your dollars. And we value that, we respect that, and uh, we look forward to today's presentation and the week. Arlen, come on up. So those of you that were at the leadership track in uh, Q3 on the farm, you may recall we had two shirt options. We had the black shirt and we had the blue shirt. And uh, we took a poll and uh, I declared the blue shirt the winner. So you now know exactly how much clout I have in HTG. Because <laughs> we're gonna wear black in 2013 and uh, we do thank Intel for supporting us along those lines. And I gotta tell you, it's hot up here, so this thing's going away right now. So, I do wanna spend a little bit of time talking about where we've come from. And particularly, some of the things we learned as we looked back at companies that started with HTG at least five years ago. This room's got a lot more people in it than it had back in 2007. Uh, we had, I looked at 30 members that were part of the initial three groups and did a little bit of analysis of the data. And out of those 30, 19 are still involved in HTG today. So almost two thirds of the companies that were part of HTG back in 2007 are still part of HTG today. Four of them have been acquired, and those companies no longer exist. Seven of them are out of HTG for one reason or another. So I was able to look at these 19 companies, and I asked them to submit their current financial data, 
And believe it or not, I was able to go through all my archives and find the financial data from 2007. So I was able to do some compare and contrast about how these companies have done. So out of that initial 30 companies, there's been 18 SWATs performed. So they have dove deeply into a very key part of what peers can do for one another, and that is to walk into businesses and look at what's going on. When I look at the current 19 members, 11 of those companies have participated in the extra events that we've begun to provide, service, sales, leadership, summits. So they're heavily participating in activities that we have started to provide to go deeper into your organization. Seven of those 19 are in a new group, okay? So over a third of the companies that were in groups one, two, or three back in 2007 are now in a new group. And out of those 19 companies, four of them have been participating in our pilot coaching and consulting program through HLG. So these guys participate deeply in what we've been trying to accomplish through HTG. And what's the result been? 284% increase in revenue in those companies over the last five years. When we look at them by individual organizations, which are the 15 numbers across the bottom, the yellow is where they were, the green is where they are. Some significant changes in their revenue numbers. And that's exciting, but 370% increase in bottom line revenue. Okay, 3.7 times more money being made by those companies today than it was back in 2007. We had some pretty non-profitable organizations when we started back in 2007 to look at these companies. And those green bars are where people are today, okay? Significant growth have been made by these organizations. 46% is the number of jobs that have been created. We've gone from 416 employees to 608. Now the reality is I don't think either political party knows how to create jobs, but HTG does, okay? And we need to keep doing it. So what do these companies do? Well, first of all, they lead. They lead their organization. A lot of them are leaders in this room. Many have gone on to be facilitators for our companies. They're not afraid to change. You know, seven of them have moved to a new group. They are willing to make investment. They're planning their business. Most of all, they have dove into HTG with both feet fully engaged and taking advantage of the things that are available to them. And the reality is, HTG works, okay? It works when you make an investment over time, when you put all your effort into helping one another grow, it will change your company, and many of the stories from these companies would be that it's changed their lives. At the end of the day, that's why we exist. We want to drive business and personal growth, okay? And it happens when you put yourself all in, you participate fully, and you do it over time. So it's your commitment year after year after year that's going to make a difference for you in HTG or any organization like this that you participate in. So look at this as an investment into your future, okay? Look at it as an opportunity to grow your organization significantly because we have the statistics to show that it really does make a difference. And that's what we want to do in your business. So I'm going to bring Scott back up to talk about where we've been this year. 2012 has been a really good year. And let's give Scott a round of applause. You know, he never asked for that himself. Thank you.
Scott does an amazing job of cranking out email. No. Uh, <laughs> he leads well, folks. He worries about the details, the things that I can't even see. And he gets them done, he executes, he makes things happen on your behalf every day. Thank you, Arlen. Thank you. And I will have to say, when I titled this section, Back to the Future, I didn't give much thought to it, but I couldn't help for one minute, one second, of sitting in that chair and hearing Arlen talk about Back to the Future, and I had this flashback to yesterday's The Idea Exchange, and The Mad Professor, and The Flux Capacitor, <laughs> <laughs> and Marty McFly, and all of that, but I digress. Uh, I do want to give you a quick reminder that now I think we've got them all handed out. Everybody should have a copy of two things, on your chair or on a chair around you. One is going to be a chapter from the Four Plans workbook. And I'll talk a little bit about that, thanks, Eric, a little bit in a minute. I just want to make sure you've got your hands on that now. The other is the HTG All 2012 Overview and Resource Guide. And um, you know, a lot of times it's interesting, we, we hand these out and then next week somebody will say, how do I get a hold of something? Or when is the summit? Or when is this or that? And this is available electronically on the SharePoint site as well. But uh, if you take a look here, you can, you'll see a few of the key slides that we want to leave you with, the key points and changes, the key dates and deadlines, and contact information. So all this right here, uh, just want to make sure you're not missing out on that. So let's go ahead and continue on with the, with the state of the program. Um, uh, not drawing any other political parallels to the state of the union, but the state of our program is strong. And as Arlen mentioned, whether it's job creation, we now have foreign policy because we have international members. We clearly have education programs because that's one of the reasons that you're here. And we could go on. But what I want to talk about is what I wish a lot of, uh, a lot of organizations could do and that is to measure, because we can manage what we measure. And many of you may or may not know that we implemented a new scorecarding system for members really throughout 2012. So at the high level, your facilitator scorecards you quarterly on 13 metrics. And we do this for a number of reasons. We want to, in this case, we're establishing baseline metrics. These are blocking and tackling things for a uh, for HTG. And we do that at three different levels. We look at the individual, the group, and the overall organization because it helps us make better decisions about where to place our bets. And what I'm talking about there is, for example, you'll see we score whether, whether these different plans are complete or not complete. Okay? Now again, we're not scoring A, A minus, B plus, B. We're scoring complete or, complete or not incomplete to start. But that tells us something. As an example, you see these plans scoring higher than the legacy plans, which we now call legacy business and legacy personal. It used to be legacy and BCDR. Okay? Those are both Q4 plans. And as would be expected, those are lower this time of year because we're getting ready to have our Q4 meetings and they haven't been scored in the groups, right? Everybody on track with that? But we want to measure that, and we also want to take a look at things like the investment ratings and the goals. Because when you tell us, I struggle in our group sometimes because certain members aren't achieving their goals, or the goals don't seem to mean anything, or we've got some people hitting it out of the park and some not, you know, we're left in a subjective, well, that's, I, I have to agree with you on that because I don't have any better information. Now, we can use this information to work on the program and help you going forward. One of the ways we're doing that is with the four plans workbook that I mentioned. You've got one of the chapters here. In total, the workbook is over 130 pages. It's a fundamental, foundational part of HTG. It's a research documented component of a successful business and life is to plan. And what you will see here is an admission on our part that we didn't provide a great deal of guidance in the past. You got four templates. Hopefully you found your way around the SharePoint site. Some other members of the facilitator helped you. Maybe somebody came into your group to speak and jumpstart you on a certain plan. But now that is in the past and we're going forward with a guidebook to help you get there. You will receive this guidebook 
in 2013. In early 2013, it'll be prior, actually at your Q1 meeting. Business plan is Q1, you're getting the business plan section. We're finalizing the drafts, the edits, getting it off before we print it in hard copy and get it to you. Now, reminder here that's been communicated for the last six months, the four plans are due the 1st of January. Now, you'll view that as a target date. It makes much more sense as you are telling us not to do the business plan here and then 90 days later do a leadership plan and then 90 days later do a life plan but to sit down and think of all those in an integrated format, get them completed, and then review them in the groups quarterly. So that's the tie-in there. The other thing I want to talk about as we move on from that is you asked us to go deeper in your organization, help you build leaders, help you build a bench of people to achieve your goals. So what we did last year was come up with five new events and programs to help you accomplish that. And we thank you for your support in getting there. We held a sales management summit. We held a service management summit. We started sales and service management SIGs. Many of you already have subgroups in your group. We started the HTG online managers track as a way for you to place managers in an online HTG program that doesn't require travel, doesn't require the high cost of being out of the office. And we also started webcasting those just like we're webcasting today. Right. We had over 50 attendees around the world participate in these programs without leaving their desk, without having to travel. And we have HDG Summit, which we had sales and service tracks as well. So my point here to you is we are providing content for people other than CEO, principals, owners. Help us take advantage of that and help us make it better. We started a new leadership track. We had over 100 people in the leadership track meeting yesterday. We ran these four times a year. We started lead strat teams, which were really, in most cases, four company subgroups that performed SWATs on one another, either face-to-face -face or virtually. You saw Arlen talk about the power of SWATs in the look back conversation that he had. You know, in this setting, we were able to bring in training, strategic planning training from gazelles. So we had a gazelle session, we had Cisco was the sponsor, provided outstanding speakers in all four sessions. We had HLG content, we had, the leader, we had Larry Little and the team from the Enrichment Center. A lot of activity going on. We're marching forward with that in our march. The first session of that will be Q1 in Dallas. I'll talk more about that in a little bit. The next thing that we're proud to say is that we're having growth and success overseas, UK and Australia, New Zealand, but specifically I'm talking about ANZ or Australia, New Zealand here today. We've been very fortunate to have strong commitment, interest, leadership in getting those groups up and running. We currently have three groups in Australia with applications for a fourth. We have two online groups running from Australia that Brad Descent does, stays up a little late at night to get the uh, time zone balance working on that activity. We had 80% of their members attend their leadership forum that we put on with gazelles. 80% turnout. They also conducted the first centralized meeting of HTG, which I'll talk more a little bit about later, but that's a concept where we bring multiple groups together. The, the majority of the meeting is as an individual group, but some of the time is spent collectively where well, we can bring in speakers and do more things and have subgroups and economies of scale, et cetera, et cetera. Bottom line is, ANZ is earning their opportunity to grow groups and add offerings because of their commitment to HTG. Speaking of HTG Online, some of you in the room I know participated in the original HT, in HTG Online sponsored by Microsoft four, five, six years ago when we have got up to 130 companies participating in that program. We discontinued the program due to resource availability on our side and the sponsors, but the interest stayed, and many of you are alumni of that program. We brought it back to build leadership and management skills and add depth. There's two different ways to participate. There's an owner of a company not currently in HTG, or there's a manager of a company of somebody already in HTG. We already have seven groups up and running. We really launched this in May. 66 companies, more in the queue, and obviously IT Nation is our big recruiting opportunity for that. So that continues to grow. 
We work in a learn, do, share environment where each month there's something to learn about, an activity to do, and then a 60 to 90 minute uh, online meeting. And you can contact Brad if you have additional questions. Speaking of Brad, I want to make note that Brad is our newest full-time employee of HTG, Brad Descent. Uh, Brad, Arlen, and I go back 10 plus years through Ingram's Venture Tech program and other channel activities. He's a program manager over HTG Online, also helping us with recruiting and facilitation. Lori Sorensen has joined us as well, coming back from uh, another example of international tours and uh, teaching experience, brings a wealth of knowledge and is helping Arlen and me and others in the, H in the Heartland Technologies family of companies uh, accomplish what we need to do. And Rebecca Gilley is a marketing intern. Interesting story here. Arlen and I are in a peer group. We're in a peer group of companies in other industries. So it's the dentists and the CPAs and the eye doctors, et cetera, et cetera. Rebecca's father runs the peer groups for the automotive service industry. And he said to her, love to have you work here, but you'd learn a lot more if you go work in another peer group organization and then come back. So we get her for four months. We're familiar with some of the performance metrics, and our relationship with service leadership is going to continue. We're re-upping that contract with them with some changes to right-size that based on what we hear from you and our advisory council and um, uh, what we see the future bringing. So talking about job count currently in HTG, the number as of the company's reporting with Q3 data is 4,400 employees on the dot, up over 4%. We also have the average employees per member. Total employees divided by total companies reporting at 17 and a half. We look at total revenue, and again, this is on a per quarter basis, so annualized right at $804 million annualized run rate for everybody in HTG, that is up as well. The average revenue per member being you, again, times four if you want to annualize that, $3.2 million. And we look at the revenue split. And we consider to continue to see this to trend somewhat right at about 57% services revenue. So let's take a look at some other numbers. And that would be the average EBITDA per employee right at $5,000. So if you're a 10 employee company, again, that's quarterly, right? If you're a 10 employee company and you didn't put $50,000 EBITDA to your bottom line last quarter, then you're below average. Okay? So there's one measure of how to use that number. The other would be the aggregate EBITDA, collecting, collectively us as one organization, 11.2% is the bottom line. We also have the number of, looking at the percentage basis, you heard me talk about last in Dallas being a 70-30 organization, as in 70% of our members have fewer, excuse me, have less than uh, $3 million in revenue. That number today is 31%. Some other numbers that we sometimes, uh, I think a lot of the groups find interesting. What are the top gross margin percentage groups collectively? So congrats to 14, 16, and 10 for being at that level. What we also did was looked at adjusted EBITDA. Remember the adjustment for, comp for owner's compensation, top three groups, 25, eight, and 17. So I give those groups a round of applause. Now, one of the things we realized in working in our peer group is that we are the only organization in our peer group that has next to no visibility to the data of our members. That's very difficult when you come to us and or a member applies, or you come to us and say, we want a large member, we want a different type of member. I don't know, Arlen doesn't know the profile of your group. I couldn't tell you if you've got a 15, 12, 17, 19, 30, and 45 employee company in your group, other than by calling the facilitator and saying, hey, can you share with me the profile of your, of your group? Clearly, there are other decisions kind of tied to the scorecarding, is how do we help a group that appears to be struggling? How do we make decisions about collectively from a business model standpoint as to the direction that we should go and where we should invest? So we are proposing, along with our fairly standard uh, limited number of changes to the membership agreement that we accept going in, we ask you to accept going into 2013, the statement in yellow. And I would be more than happy to visit with you individually 
your group, your facilitator, to uh, talk more about why this is, but we believe that by having information shared by service leadership that we can see, we're not connecting into their data and mining it. They're sharing with us on a report by report request basis. We need to make this decision, please provide us this information. It's HTG management, it's not the advisory council, it's not the facilitators, it's not other members, it's Arlen and I looking at that to say, how can we make things better? Another way to make things better is for us to continue to grow from a recruiting standpoint. And there are people in this room, I could rattle off names, that have done a great job in helping us recruit members. HTG currently has 284 positions worldwide if we were full. 30 of those are not full. Some of those come clearly from departures, others come from us starting new groups and needing to backfill into uh, the groups where those members were previously, previously located. So we're creating, much like you create, right, a sales engine, a lead generation engine for what we need to do, and we've been doing this for about six months. We work with ConnectWise, we ask for referrals from our sponsors, we ask for referrals from you, we use social media, we speak at events, we do the types of things that you do as we've shifted from really selling by education, hey, it's great, come join us, to now we really have to sell. Right? And you will see here that nothing that we can do is gonna compare to the people in this room. Two thirds of you are going to IT Nation. It's about 250. We have 30 spots open. Look at that ratio. If one out of every eight of you found one person, we're full. But that's not enough. That's not enough because you deserve more. So to help with that, We've created an incentive that runs from now through Q1. I'm calling it our one, two, free. Now that's just, you know, good marketing, right? One, two, free. One, two, free incentive plan because we want to fill the groups by Q1 and you should too. Whether you set your group at 10 or 11 or 12, we want to get there. What does that mean to you? Asking you to recruit one member who names you as their recruiter and is in the meeting in Q1. This is not you handing me 20 business cards, not that I won't take them, but from the incentive, we need the person in the room. That's the measure, right? That's the goal. That's the SMART goal, person in room. And or, you could recruit two online members. One of those could even be in your own company. Put a manager in the track, find somebody from outside. If you do so, what do you win? You do not win the Hilton Anatole in Dallas, but you do get a free night stay in Dallas, $200 suggested retail value. And we'd like for you to stay free while you're there. So I want to tie this up by saying again, 2012, strong year. We have things we own that we can do better, and we want to work with you to make the program even stronger. Arlen? Thanks, Scott. So we have been on a path the last um, about three and a half years now of this pyramid, moving from practice to performance to process to people. And for the last year or so, we've been focused on people. The reality is it's time for us to jump to the next thing. It's still going to be people, but we have to go deeper as we deal with the most important resource we have, and the largest challenge we all have as business owners. That is getting the right people, using them in the right way to continue to drive growth in our organization. So we're going to really begin to focus on organizational health. And it's important that we think about what that means. Okay? Lencioni says people need to be reminded more than they need to be instructed. We're really quick to try to go find the next shiny object to help us get the magic bullet to run our company. There is no such thing, okay? All these guys that are writing and studying business today are finding out that the companies that succeed are the companies that execute. And we have the greatest execution model that exists through peer groups. So we're gonna focus there we're going to focus a lot there around how to build a healthy organization, modeled after 
Lencioni's latest book, The Advantage. Okay, tonight if you stop by the, uh, am I stealing your thunder here? No. If you stop by the online uh, booth in the vendor fair, you'll get a copy of The Advantage. That's going to kind of be a guidebook for us as we talk about the next few years. Ah, I stole my own thunder. Um, we want you to read this book. We want you to understand it. We want you to think about what it means to create a healthy organization. Scott shared that our EBIT does 11.2% last quarter. That's three points up from two years ago, okay? 3% of 804 million is enough money for us to continue to come back and spend time together. We're doing the right things together, but we can do better, we have to do better, and we want to use organizational health as our new rally cry. There's five key areas that we're going to focus on as we do that. The ownership layer, leadership, management, teams, and individuals. And as I spend more and more time in your company's consulting, what I find is we ignore certain aspects of those roles, okay? Most of us spend our time focused in the middle. That's where the chaos happens. That's where customer issues come up. That's where employee issues raise their head. And we spend very little time being an owner. I spent my time yesterday at the leadership track talking about the result of that. Calls I get saying, we're out of cash, and I don't know what to do. I'm trying to sell my company, but I've got negative EBIT done. The, the buyer says, I've got to pay him to take it. People are putting their future on things, but they're not spending the right amount of time to do the things that really matter. So we're going to focus on getting your company healthy holistically, not just from a managing the problems day-to-day -day perspective. We've got to do that. But who's really thinking about the future? Who's strategically planning what you're going to do, not only this year, but two or three years from now? That's what leadership's about. Who's focused on providing reviews to the individuals? When I meet with your employees doing SWATs and consulting, you know what the number one thing they tell me is? I don't really know what success means in my job. If I even have a job description, it's like five years old. I haven't had a review for three years. I don't really get any feedback, but I guess since I get a check, I must be doing enough right that they keep me around. That's, a, that's not an effective way to have a healthy organization. So we've got to get these things right. And we're going to focus on that next year. Collins says it another way. It's about the companies that do the 20-mile march, that get up every day, do the right things the right way, whether they feel like it or not. Those are the companies that succeed over time. You know, and both he and Lencioni have got the statistics. They've done the work to identify what makes us successful. It's execution. And we're going to leverage the peer groups to help us help you execute more effectively. That's why the plans are so important, so that your, your fellow members know what you're marching to. So if they need to push you along, they know which way to push, because it can all line up together. So 2013, 2014 is going to be about getting healthy. It's going to mean some change. We're going to have to do things different. Because if we do what we did yesterday, we're going to get what we got yesterday. And we need to do better than that. And that's what we're committed to do with HTG, to make some changes in the program to drive us all collectively in the right direction. And so I'm going to have Scott come and talk about parts of that and what we're going to do to make that happen. Thanks, Arlen. I'm going to talk about a few of the changes, and uh, I'm more than happy to visit again one-on-one -on -one in groups. I've got a number of groups I'm coming into uh, over the next two days to talk about some of these changes, changes in group planning, and then I'll hand it back to, to Arlen. Um, one of the changes that we are doing in an extension is to expand what we call our role-specific offerings. You heard me talk earlier 
about the sales and management summit activities and the leadership uh, track as well. So what you will see this year in 2013 is again a leadership track on the left, uh, a service and sales management summit on the right, and there in the middle in light, the vision summit. Now some of you participated in years past in what we call the CEO forum. And it was an opportunity to, in a role specific model, to bring CEOs together to have those conversations. We kind of morphed that into the leadership forum with a broad audience in 2012 and decided that we need both of those. So as you will see here, for example, on the leadership track, the focus is on organizational health. There's not a size requirement to be part of the program. We're webcasting that and you get a site license. So if you have people back in your office that want to participate in the leadership forums, we call the individual meetings forums, the overall program, the track, they can do that. It's three quarters instead of four. We had feedback that four was a little too much. You can see when it starts, January in Dallas, and we'll be doing new engagement activities. There won't be the lead strat teams that we did this past year. Looking at the Vision Summit, as expected, focusing on CEO topics. Uh, many of you are familiar with the TED.org type presentations of TED where you go and watch these great ideas. Not unlike a smaller version of the idea exchange, but we want you to bring ideas to us. It's not speakers speaking out to you. We want you to bring ideas. We'll post those, we'll vet those, and we'll have a large group of people in that forum, member to member, presenting. If you want good ideas, that's where they're going to be. Also be webcast, it is happening in Q3. So it replaces the quarter of the leadership track in the event you want to participate in both of those. It's going to follow the centralized meeting in Q3, which I'll allude to here in just a minute. The sales and service management summits, very similar to what we did before. They're August and September. Again, remember the other opportunities you have for those sales and service managers to get involved between now and then. And likewise, that will be webcast with license. So we'll talk a little bit about uh, another aspect. We have the role base. Let's move to facilitation. And we have been extremely fortunate with the facilitator base we have. That said, we are the only peer group in our peer group that uses members to facilitate. And we've ridden this horse a long way, and in some cases our horses are getting tired. And uh, they've asked in some cases to retire, in some cases there's an assistant facilitator that wants to step up, in some cases they don't want to do the meeting planning, or it's just a, you know, a change for them, they want to do something new, and that's fine. So we are working based on feedback to provide a much more consistent experience in those groups. Uh, come visit with me sometime if you want to talk about variability between different groups and how they run their groups, the expectations they have, and those sorts of things. We want to create a more standardized process, uh, environment, culture, so that we have similar group performance and we can scale that up. The staff we're using there is our partnership with HLG. This meeting, we will be working to transition three groups from member facilitator to HLG facilitator status. And in Q1, the HLG facilitators will be the ones who are facilitating in that role. We have three groups who are staff facilitated today. In Dallas, we'll have six, and we'll continue to march that forward. The really key here is our ability to deliver better content as well as those individuals will be relative subject matter experts on certain topics that they can bring into the group. And uh, there's my comment as well on the, on the changeover that we're undergoing. So let's talk now about meetings. You're in a meeting now, you're gonna be in a meeting in Q1, wherever the case could be. We know meetings, and that would be, let's look back earlier in the year when we met around the world with 25 meetings in Q1. Then we met again in Q3. Now we'll meet in Q1. Now we'll meet in Q3. And unless you really love meeting planning, there's a lot of effort going on behind the scenes, a lot of your miles and travel going to individual locations. So what we want to move to with our 25 groups today is from a 50 meeting model in Q1 and Q3 to a centralized meeting model where we have fewer than 20 meetings uh, in, any given, in any given year worldwide. So what does a centralized meeting look like? A centralized meeting is just a, a midpoint between everybody in one place 
and you out by yourself. So our model is four to six groups in one location. Think of it as a mini all, or a, I guess that's an iPad mini, a mini, uh, a mini HTG all session, because what we can gain from this is that additional size helps us in a variety of ways. We can now bring subject matter experts into the meetings that we couldn't do when it was 15 people over in wherever USA or otherwise. We can also do sub-meetings as part of that, say all the service managers together. We can also have speakers come in where we get everybody together collectively. We help the sponsors by coming in and having an opportunity to interact with more people. We save the, rec the time from the facilitators in terms of having to plan the meetings because they'll be, for the most part, centrally planned. So many opportunities here. The first one of these is August 13th through 14th in Omaha, just prior to the Vision Summit. I offered this to the facilitators a month ago. I have had interest. I don't want to say it's first come, first serve, but it is. And we'll be doing more of that as we go forward. So one thing that's always near and dear to people's hearts is how much does HTG cost? And we've worked hard to look at these programs and to keep it as simple as possible. And uh, this is where I start to feel like the politician ads that I've heard for the last year. But what I'm pleased to say, and in, in no politics intended, is that the cost of being an HTG peer group member in 2013 will be the same as being a peer group member in 2012. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. So what you see here is a list, a combination of things we've talked about, the groups, the leadership track, the three summits, and online. You can see the number of meetings and the full price if you bought these a la carte. You'll notice that we've created three bundles as color-coded on the right and tied down in the left, where we're giving you an opportunity to pay early and get a large discount or pay semi-annually and also get a discount. There will be no quarterly payment to be an HTG member. It's simply becoming semi-annual. It's appreciate processing all of these credit cards four times a year. So um, again, more than glad to talk about this in, in more detail, but we're very pleased with the model. Again, the webcasting piece of this and what we're doing, we believe it's straightforward and uh, look forward to, to, to uh, implementing this in 2013. You will be asked to select the program of your choice when you renew. That doesn't mean you couldn't come to something if you decide later in the year, but you're gonna be asked to pick one of the SKUs, either peer groups or the three bundles, either annual or semi-annual when you renew at the end of the year. Let's continue on, and um, Arlen, let's talk a little bit about uh, Hands That Give. So Hands That Give has been a, uh, a program we announced back in May of 2010. Uh, we've, we lost another member this past year in the UK, and uh, you know, life happens, unexpected things happen, and we want to honor um, his life, and, and just reinforce the fact that we need to be prepared. Um, hands that give, we have about 170 companies that are part of that program today. Um, you know, last week we saw another major natural disaster occur. Things happen. This is your opportunity to become part of a pool of funds designed to provide response. Last year, we had four requests, or this year we've had four requests to provide support, which we've responded to. But the reality is we can't help if you don't ask. And, you know, we try our best to reach out and talk to folks we think might be affected. But when you have a need, please ask. We have a, a nice pool of funds. We have many willing people that want to help you and you shouldn't face these challenges by yourself. That's what this community is about, coming alongside one another. The thing that I get asked all the time is, well, when, when can we send, you know, when can we make our next payment, or when do we have to pay again? The reality is, we, we made one request for people to participate when you joined the program. We've spent money the last two and a half years 
and our balance is higher today than it was when we started. So as we serve people, people give back. Folks from outside of HTG are giving money to us, and quite honestly, we're taking money in faster than we can help people because we're not getting enough requests for assistance. So if you're holding back because you think there's not funds available, that's a bad decision. The reality is people from around this industry are pouring money into funds, and we'll get money out of this, you know, people seeing Hurricane Sandy, and they'll call and say, hey, we've heard about Hands That Give, can we send some money to you guys to use to help your members? And we always say, okay, that's okay. Uh, but, you know, we need you to reach out and say, hey, we've got an issue. The kinds of things that we've been asked to do this year have involved health issues, they've involved employees struggling with personal things, they've involved family or marital problems. You know, we'll get involved not only in the natural disaster stuff, but in the personal crisis. Because sometimes we just need some help. And the reality is, Hands That Give is designed to do that. But sometimes we need a different kind of help. We need help to solve business problems. And Heartland Leadership Group is something that's been on the roadmap for a long, long time that we started to bring to fruition this, this year. We've been in pilot with 12 companies around the world, and this team of people is, is targeting coming in and providing coaching to executives to help us learn how to solve issues, think through problems, and just walk beside you. It also comes in in a consulting role to help provide answers to issues and work through and solve problems. Peer groups are awesome for accountability, for dealing with things that you can work on in a two-day, a quarter kind of format. But as we grow, some of the problems we have kind of get bigger than that. We need more than a couple of days a quarter of input. We need folks that can walk beside us and help us work through these challenges. So that's what HLG is designed to do. And we have a small team today that will be working as facilitators and, and consultants and coaches, developing some content. And they'll be available for you to engage with. They'll have a booth at the vendor fair tonight. And I want you to think about how you're going to grow yourself as an individual. You know, I ran my company for 25 years thinking I was smart enough to do it myself. It actually didn't take me more than a few months to figure out I wasn't that smart. So um, I started getting coached over the last year. And it's an it's a experience that's changed the way I look at things. Because coaches ask questions. They don't give you answers. They just keep asking questions. And uh, they cause you to think and create your own solutions. And a lot of times we need that outside perspective that we can have a trust relationship with, ask the hard, have asked the hard questions so we get the right answers. I'm going to call Tim Brewer to the stage because one of the other things that we're doing is we're going to leverage uh, an ambassador for HLG and also for HTG. Tim has been a friend of HTG for many, many years. He is going to serve as our ambassador to really share the message of the power of HTG, the power of coaching and consulting, and uh, kind of be a voice for us around the world as to why peer groups and coaching matter. Thank you, Alan. Thank you. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, who, who have I met before? And we've got to met Tim Brewer. Okay. So, I'm sorry. Um, look, it's great to be here today, and it's my absolute privilege um, to take on the role of ambassador for HLG. And you'll be sitting there like I am wondering, well, Tim, what does ambassador do? Um, well, ambassadors go into countries and, and represent their home country. So for you guys, having uh, HLG as an opportunity for you next year, um, there's three key things that I can offer. The first thing is that I come with an external view. I'm not a part of a HL, uh, HTG group and haven't been, so I come with an external view. Um, industry experience. I uh, also have a global perspective as well. 
So being able to come and provide that feedback to the executive team. Their second thing is that it's not always the right time um, for you to engage help. And there's a process that HLG will use to onboard people that put in expressions of interest. And those expressions of interest uh, open until the end of November. Um, and there's a process I'll be helping the team through to ensure that it is the right time uh, for the right people so that there's success at the end of that journey. But that's all the official stuff, the suit and tie stuff. Who likes sport? Football. American football. Okay. I've used examples with American sport before and got myself in a whole lot of trouble. So if I get this wrong, for example, you can't get a touchdown in most of your sports, and I get them confused all the time. Baseball doesn't have a touchdown. You can't throw the ball out of the park in American football. But what I do know um, coming into next year is that there's a huge opportunity, and this has been provided, uh, the ambassador role opportunity has been provided because an opportunity that's happened for me. And I'm going into a situation like a draft next year where I'm going to be changing out of my role in Anatel. And the privilege for me was to be able to take up this um, ambassador role as uh, one of the first opportunities um, cutting into next year. Looking at next year, if you're like me, like Harlan, you think, hey, oh, I'm doing pretty good. Oh, I'm okay. Um, and I've got no problems. I don't need any help. So the first thing you go was, hey, is anyone else just like me looking into next year, looking into change? In fact, in the next slide, I'm going to talk a little bit about change. Um, going, hey, I've got all this change coming, I've got this thing, I've got things keeping me up late at night. Is anyone else going, hey, you know what, I've got something keeping me up late at night. One person down the front, is everyone lying in the room today? <laughs> you know what, I've talked a lot in the past, and I don't have a lot of time, so I won't run through it all now, but we all have the need at some point to change. And if you're sitting in the audience today saying, yep, you know what, that's me, I can't walk away from this. That's me, I, have the, I need to change next year. So you know what, I might have a problem. Who has a problem that they need help addressing in 2013? One person, two people. Look, I'm going to make this easier. Point to someone you know has a challenge. Point to them like that and go, they have a problem. And if you're in, you're not allowed to point at your husband and Zorn, stop pointing at me. Okay? You know what, we often don't end up changing because we need that little bit of extra help. HLG might not be that right bit of extra help for you, but what I'm encouraging you to do is exploring getting that, that right. For me, I'm very fortunate. I've got people like Arlen that I've been walking with through my changes. Zorn, I'm very, very fortunate to have someone walk with me. And HLG is a fantastic opportunity for you to have someone walk alongside through that change because you do not have to walk through that change alone. I'm going to be hanging around for the rest of the day. I really just wanted up to come say hi. Um, a very huge privilege for me um, fulfilling that role. And you never know, with me going into a draft, maybe even playing on another team or in a different role than I play today, um, it might even be me have the privilege of, of walk alongside one or two of you, as I do today, just in relationship and friendship. Thanks for your time today. I really appreciate what the guys do in H. TG, you are an amazing organisation. It's been my privilege to watch you guys grow and develop. I can't wait for 2013. You've got some super exciting things going on. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tim. Jeffrey? So Tim's been part of a, a large roll-up in Australia. He has a lot of experience that he brings to the table. But the thing that he's most passionate about is helping people down their journey and growing as individuals. It takes courage to change. We're going to change in 2013. We have to change to be relevant. One of the things I'm very much committed to is we are going to either remain the leading peer group organization in this industry or I'm going to throw the towel in. It's too much work to just be another, another organization. We're either going to lead or we're going to stop. And my intent is we're going to continue to lead. So none of us like change. We're all great with change as long as it's you. OK? You do need to change. We, maybe not me. Well, the reality is we all do. So you can either resist and fight and say, you know what, I like it the way it is. You can tolerate it and kind of under your breath say, well, if I have to, 
or you can be part of the process and embrace it. That's what I'm asking you to do as we go into a new year. We're on a two-year journey to make some significant changes in this organization, changes that have to happen. We need you to be part of that process. And Scott's going to wrap us up here today. I challenge you to help us remain the leading peer group organization in the IT industry. Nobody else can have a room filled with people that are as passionate as this group is. We can change this industry. We have been changing this industry. Together we can continue to do that. But be part of it with us, okay? I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer. I need your help. Let's make it happen. <laughs> the core is going to continue to be the core, though, all right? Change doesn't mean we're going to throw out what we're doing today. We're not, because what we do is right. We just need to add to it our mission, our vision, our core values. It's not going to change. Our culture remains the go-giver culture of peer accountability. We need to work together to go to the next level. So Scott, let's talk about how we execute. Thanks, Arlen. And one of the things we want to talk about, consistent with our business and personal growth driven by execution, is what are we asking of you? It's easy to get up here and throw a lot of stuff against the wall and have you walk out the door and say, but what am I supposed to do? Or how does this fit with me? And we want to look at this from the standpoint of the positive change it's going to bring. I mean, this is uh, not so much a to-do list, but more of an opportunity list for what you can choose. Now, the activities listed here ranging from the new four plans workbook. Again, you can use the workbook that you have to get started. Provide us some feedback. It's not printed. It's not for sale yet. It's uh, in the process of looking for feedback. You can complete that. The organizational health. You're going to get a copy of The Advantage tonight. Inside and online right now, there is a simple organizational health assessment you can take to get feedback on your organization right away. I encourage you to do that. Use that as a benchmark, a baseline as to where you are, and then take it again as we go forward through 2013. The recruiting piece, straightforward. We need your help. As you find, you know, the, the, as I commonly say, whether you're in the booth or sitting next to uh, someone at lunch, the next person you meet could be the next member of your group, and we want to make that happen. The tracks and summits we've talked about, we want to make those decisions internally about who's going to be able to participate, and then providing input. We conduct a Q4 meeting survey that will come out. We'll have questions about this event and questions looking forward. It's one of the ways that you can provide feedback to us. And then, obviously, your renewal for 2013 on the changes and 12-15, uh, December 15th, is the date that we're looking to have that happen. I've got one other small addition here, and that's looking forward to HTG Summit in Dallas in May. And that would be just that we have hands that give, we have minds and mouths that give, and if you have a presentation or know somebody who would like to lead a breakout, a workshop, do something innovative at HTG Summit, please let me know. So the final points we'd make here would be make sure you understand the resources available to you in the room, and whether they are on the chair in the form of the handouts, whether they're online on the SharePoint site, whether they're in your meeting room today, just as Tim said, it's easy to point to somebody else that you think has an issue or a problem or a challenge. You know, look around, left, right, front, back. There are resources for you today. And I know that members struggle with that sometimes, but reaching outside your group can be a great opportunity for those resources. So summing up, these items are listed in your handout. I'm not going to repeat them. Arlen went through looking at how the data fell in from uh, the initial groups of HTG to the state of 2012, to our new framework, to the changes that we're making. The bottom line really is value and better serving and impact you. That's where we're driving, where we're missing it. Let us know but we know that we are hitting it more cases than not, and we want to get you uh, well positioned for success in 2013 and beyond. So join us on our journey, continue with us on our 20 mile march, and have an awesome Q4 meeting and IT Nation if you're staying. Thank you.
Let's do it, 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 let's do it